The devastation wrought by World War II left Europe grappling with the colossal task of rebuilding on a scale never before witnessed in modern history. The war had not only claimed millions of lives, but had laid waste to cities, infrastructure, and economies across the continent. Countries that were once economic powerhouses now faced widespread poverty, famine, and the daunting challenge of reconstruction. As the war came to an end in 1945, the Allied powers, particularly the United States, were confronted with the stark reality of a continent in ruins. The physical destruction was evident in the skeletal remains of once thriving urban centers where buildings stood as hollow shells bearing the scars of bombings and battles. Beyond the visible destruction, there was a profound human toll with millions displaced, families torn apart, and the trauma of war lingering in the hearts and minds of survivors. Amidst this wreckage, a new geopolitical landscape was emerging. The wartime alliance between the United States, the Soviet Union, and the United Kingdom was unraveling, giving way to the Cold War. The ideological divide between the capitalist West, led by the United States and the communist East, led by the Soviet Union, heightened tensions and reshaped global politics. The fear of communism spreading into the war-torn nations of Europe became a paramount concern for the United States. In this context, the Marshall Plan took shape as a strategic response to not only address the immediate humanitarian crisis, but also to counter the influence of communism. The plan aimed to demonstrate the superiority of the capitalist model by fostering economic recovery and stability. Moreover, the Marshall Plan was rooted in the understanding that a prosperous and stable Europe was not only beneficial for the nations directly affected, but also crucial for global peace and security. The United States recognized that economic instability and poverty could breed political unrest and extremism, making the rehabilitation of Europe a matter of strategic importance. In proposing the Marshall Plan, Secretary of State George C. Marshall sought to address not only the physical ruins of war, but also the underlying economic and social challenges that could potentially undermine the fragile peace. The plan was a bold and visionary approach that recognized the interconnectedness of nations in the post-war era and aimed to create a framework for international cooperation and stability. In essence, the background and context of the Marshall Plan lie in the ruins of World War II, the emergence of the Cold War, and the recognition that rebuilding Europe was not only a humanitarian imperative, but also a strategic necessity for the United States and the broader global community. The origins of the Marshall Plan can be traced back to a critical juncture in post-World War II history when the United States found itself at the crossroads of humanitarian responsibility and geopolitical strategy. The visionary architect behind the plan, U.S. Secretary of State George C. Marshall, delivered a historic speech at Harvard University on June 5, 1947. In this address, Marshall articulated the urgent need for a comprehensive European recovery program. The speech at Harvard was not merely a theoretical proposition, but a response to the grim realities on the ground. Marshall had witnessed firsthand the devastation in Europe during his visits, and he understood that the continent's recovery was not only a moral imperative, but also a strategic necessity. The looming threat of communism coupled with the desire to prevent the recurrence of the economic instability that had contributed to World War II, compelled Marshall to put forth a bold and unprecedented plan. The implementation of the Marshall Plan was a meticulous process that involved a synergy of diplomatic, economic, and logistical efforts. Recognizing the complexity of the task, the U.S. Congress passed the Economic Cooperation Act in 1948 establishing the Economic Cooperation Administration, ECA. The ECA served as the administrative body responsible for executing the Marshall Plan, coordinating the distribution of aid and overseeing its impact. One of the key features of the plan was its inclusivity. The offer of assistance was extended to all European nations, including those under Soviet influence. This gesture aimed not only to address the immediate humanitarian crisis, but also to promote a sense of unity and collaboration in the face of common challenges. However, the Soviet Union and its satellite states, viewing the Marshall Plan as a tool of Western economic and political influence, declined to participate. The Marshall Plan's implementation unfolded as a multifaceted effort. The aid provided by the United States was not a blank check. Rather, it was structured to address specific needs and priorities. 
participating nations were required to submit detailed plans outlining how they intended to use the funds for reconstruction. This collaborative approach sought to ensure that the aid was utilized effectively, fostering a sense of shared responsibility and transparency. Moreover, the plan emphasized the importance of economic liberalization and market-oriented reforms. The conditions attached to the aid were designed to encourage recipient countries to dismantle trade barriers, stabilize their currencies, and adopt policies conducive to economic growth. This strategic approach aimed not only to rebuild physical infrastructure, but also to establish a foundation for sustainable economic development. In essence, the origins of the Marshall Plan lie in the compassionate vision of George C. Marshall and the understanding that the reconstruction of Europe was intertwined with global stability. Its implementation showcased a commitment to diplomacy, collaboration, and strategic thinking, setting the stage for one of the most remarkable and successful international assistance programs in history. The Marshall Plan, formerly known as the European Recovery Program, ERP, was conceived with a set of comprehensive objectives and goals aimed at addressing both the immediate and long-term challenges faced by war-torn Europe. These goals reflected a nuanced understanding of the interconnectedness between economic recovery, political stability, and the containment of communism. At its core, the Marshall Plan sought to provide immediate relief to the acute economic distress plaguing post-war Europe. The massive infusion of financial aid was intended to jumpstart economies crippled by war, enabling nations to rebuild industries, repair infrastructure, and restore essential services. The goal was not just to alleviate the suffering of the European people, but also to lay the groundwork for sustainable economic recovery. Industrial production and trade, a key objective of the Marshall Plan, was to revive industrial production and stimulate trade among European nations. By doing so, the plan aimed to create a self-sustaining economic ecosystem that would contribute to the prosperity of individual countries and foster collaborative economic ties across borders. The emphasis on industrial recovery was seen as pivotal in restoring a sense of normalcy to the lives of Europeans and rebuilding the economic foundations of the continent. The geopolitical context of the Cold War significantly shaped the goals of the Marshall Plan. One of its primary objectives was to contain the spread of communism in Europe, the United States, Recognizing the vulnerability of war-torn nations to ideological influence saw the economic rehabilitation of Europe as a means to prevent the expansion of Soviet influence. By fostering economic stability and democratic governance, the plan aimed to create a bulwark against the allure of communism, democratic values and institutions. Beyond economic considerations, the Marshall Plan had a profound political dimension. It sought to reinforce democratic values and institutions in the recipient countries. The belief was that stable democracies would be less susceptible to communist ideologies, and thus the plan encouraged the establishment and strengthening of democratic governance structures. This emphasis on political stability complemented the economic recovery efforts and contributed to the long-term vision of a politically secure and economically robust Europe. Uh, the Marshall Plan recognized that true recovery extended beyond economic and political realms to the well-being of individuals. The provision of aid aimed to improve living conditions, alleviate poverty, and restore a sense of normalcy to the lives of Europeans. This humanitarian dimension was not just an ancillary goal, but a fundamental aspect of the plan's commitment to rebuilding societies shattered by war, cultural and educational exchange. In addition to economic and political recovery, the Marshall Plan facilitated cultural and educational exchange. Programs were initiated to foster mutual understanding among nations, promote academic collaboration, and facilitate the exchange of ideas. These efforts were viewed as essential in creating a foundation for lasting peace and cooperation among the diverse nations of Europe. The Marshall Plan's objectives were multifaceted, encompassing economic recovery, political stability, containment of communism, and the overall well-being of the European people. Its goals were interconnected, reflecting a holistic approach to rebuilding a continent devastated by war and shaping the trajectory of post-war European history. The Marshall Plan's financial assistance was unprecedented in scale and ambition, reflecting the magnitude of the post-war challenges faced by European nations. 
the United States, as the principal architect of the plan, committed substantial resources to facilitate the recovery of a continent devastated by the ravages of war. Between 1948 and 1952, the United States allocated over $12 billion, equivalent to about $120 billion today, in economic assistance to 16 European countries. This financial commitment represented a colossal investment aimed at catalyzing the economic revival of nations that had suffered severe physical and economic devastation. The sheer scale of the aid underscored the significance attached to rebuilding Europe and preventing the spread of communism. Grants, loans, and technical assistance and the financial assistance provided by the Marshall Plan took various forms. Grants constituted a significant portion of the aid, uh, offering immediate relief uh, to war-torn economies. Uh, concurrently, uh, the plan also extended loans to recipient countries, uh, recognizing the need for a mix of economic instruments to support recovery. Additionally, technical assistance programs were initiated to provide expertise, knowledge, and guidance uh, in areas such as agriculture, industry, and trade. The allocation of funds was strategically designed to address the diverse needs of each country. The Marshall Plan recognized the importance of a holistic approach, directing funds to key sectors such as agriculture, industry, and infrastructure. This sectoral distribution aimed to create a balanced and comprehensive recovery that would contribute to the overall economic stability of the recipient nations. Crucially, the plan required participating countries to collaborate in the planning and allocation of funds. Joint planning sessions and consultations were held to ensure that the aid was tailored to the specific needs and priorities of each nation. This collaborative approach not only promoted transparency, but also fostered a sense of shared responsibility among European nations. The financial assistance provided by the Marshall Plan yielded tangible results. Participating countries experienced a remarkable economic revival, with industrial production and trade witnessing significant increases. The infusion of capital played a pivotal role in rebuilding infrastructure, revitalizing industries, and enhancing the overall economic resilience of the recipient nations. By promoting trade and economic collaboration, the Marshall Plan contributed to the establishment of a network of interconnected European economies. The plan's architects envisioned a cooperative economic framework that would not only stimulate individual nations, but also foster a sense of unity and collaboration among European countries. This vision laid the groundwork for the later development of the European Economic Community, a precursor to the European Union. While the Marshall Plan was largely successful, it faced challenges in terms of equitable distribution. Some critics argued that certain countries received a disproportionately large share of the aid, leading to disparities in economic recovery. However, proponents contended that the distribution was based on the genuine needs and plans submitted by the participating nations. The Soviet Union and its satellite states vehemently opposed the Marshall Plan, viewing it as a tool of Western economic and political influence. The opposition from the Eastern Bloc countries further underscored the ideological divide of the Cold War and limited the plan's reach to Western European nations. The financial assistance provided by the Marshall Plan was a monumental effort that played a crucial role in the post-war recovery of Europe. The infusion of funds, strategic allocation, and collaborative planning contributed to the plan's success in rebuilding shattered economies and fostering a sense of unity among European nations. The financial assistance offered through the Marshall Plan was not a one-sided affair. It came with a set of conditions and expectations designed to ensure the effective utilization of aid, promote economic stability, and advance the broader goals of the plan. Participating countries were required to submit detailed plans outlining how they intended to use the financial assistance for reconstruction. These plans encompassed various aspects, including the allocation of funds to specific sectors, the implementation of economic reforms, and the establishment of transparent mechanisms for monitoring and reporting. A distinctive feature of the Marshall Plan was its emphasis on collaboration among the recipient nations. Joint planning sessions and consultations were conducted to encourage participating countries to work together in allocating and utilizing the aid effectively. This collaborative approach aimed to create a sense of shared responsibility and to ensure that the aid addressed the collective needs of the region.
The Marshall Plan was not merely a charity. It was a strategic effort to instill market-oriented policies in the recipient countries. Nations were encouraged to eliminate trade barriers, reduce government intervention in the economy, and adopt policies conducive to free market principles. These conditions aim to create an environment that would not only facilitate economic recovery, but also contribute to the long-term stability and growth of the participating nations. To address the economic challenges exacerbated by war, recipient countries were expected to stabilize their currencies. Currency stabilization was crucial for restoring confidence in the economic systems of these nations and ensuring that the financial assistance could be effectively utilized without succumbing to inflationary pressures. Recognizing the interconnectedness of economic and political stability, the Marshall Plan encouraged participating nations to strengthen their democratic institutions. The establishment and consolidation of democratic governance structures were viewed as essential components of a stable and resilient Europe. This emphasis on democracy aligned with the broader objective of preventing the spread of communism, political conditions. While the plan did not impose specific political systems, it did lay out certain political conditions. Recipient nations were expected to create and maintain stable political environments conducive to economic recovery. The idea was that political stability would contribute to the overall success of the plan by fostering an environment of trust and predictability for investors. Implicit in the conditions of the Marshall Plan was the expectation of accountability. Participating nations were accountable for the effective use of aid, the implementation of proposed plans, and the fulfillment of the agreed-upon conditions. This accountability was intended to ensure that the assistance provided would result in tangible and sustainable outcomes, reciprocal responsibilities. The Marshall Plan envisioned a reciprocal relationship between the United States and the recipient nations. While the U.S. offered substantial financial aid, it expected that the recipient countries would actively engage in the reconstruction process, collaborate with each other, and work toward shared objectives. This reciprocal responsibility was fundamental to the ethos of international cooperation that underpinned the plan. The conditions and recipient responsibilities associated with the Marshall Plan were not merely bureaucratic requirements, but strategic elements aimed at shaping the trajectory of post-war Europe. By linking financial assistance to economic reforms, collaborative planning, and democratic governance, the plan sought to create a foundation for a stable, prosperous, and interconnected Europe. The Marshall Plan, a visionary initiative born out of the post-World War II landscape, has left an indelible legacy that extends far beyond its immediate economic objectives. Its impact on the reconstruction of Europe, the geopolitics of the Cold War, and the evolution of transatlantic relations has shaped the course of history in profound ways. One of the most immediate and tangible outcomes of the Marshall Plan was the revitalization of European economies. The financial assistance provided by the United States played a pivotal role in rebuilding infrastructure, jump-starting industries, and stabilizing currencies. The economic transformation was nothing short of remarkable, and with participating nations experiencing significant growth in industrial production and trade, creation of a cooperative economic framework, the collaborative nature of the Marshall Plan laid the foundation for a cooperative economic framework in Europe. The plan encouraged participating nations to work together, fostering economic ties and creating a sense of interdependence. This spirit of collaboration sowed the seeds for later initiatives, including the European Economic Community, which ultimately evolved into the European Union, strengthening democratic institutions. The emphasis on democratic governance within the Marshall Plan had a lasting impact on the political landscape of post-war Europe. Participating nations, buoyed by U.S. support, worked to strengthen democratic institutions, contributing to the establishment and consolidation of stable political systems. This commitment to democracy became a defining feature of the post-war European order. In the broader context of the Cold War, the Marshall Plan played a crucial role in the containment of communism. By fostering economic stability and political cohesion and democratic governance, 
The plan contributed to creating a buffer against the spread of Soviet influence. The success of the Marshall Plan demonstrated the viability of the capitalist model as an effective countermeasure to the allure of communism. The Marshall Plan marked a significant chapter in the history of transatlantic relations. The United States, through its generous aid and collaborative approach, solidified its role as a global leader. The plan created a sense of solidarity between the United States and Western European nations, laying the groundwork for enduring alliances and partnerships that would define the geopolitics of the Cold War era. U.S. Emergence as a Global Economic Power The Marshall Plan contributed to the emergence of the United States as a global economic powerhouse. By leveraging its economic strength for the reconstruction of Europe, the U.S. demonstrated both its economic prowess and its commitment to international cooperation. This newfound global economic influence set the stage for the United States to play a central role in shaping the post-war world order. Facilitating mutual understanding beyond the economic and political dimensions, the Marshall Plan facilitated cultural and educational exchange. Academic programs, exchange initiatives, and collaborations helped build bridges of mutual understanding among European nations and between Europe and the United States. These exchanges fostered a sense of shared values and common goals, contributing to the broader vision of a peaceful and interconnected world. The Marshall Plan stands as a model for successful international assistance. Its combination of financial aid, collaborative planning, and conditionality established a blueprint for addressing post-conflict reconstruction. The plan demonstrated the effectiveness of strategic, well-targeted assistance in rebuilding societies and preventing the recurrence of conflict. For the people of post-war Europe, the Marshall Plan became a symbol of hope and resilience. It offered a lifeline to nations struggling to recover from the devastation of war, showcasing the potential for recovery and renewal, even in the face of seemingly insurmountable challenges. In conclusion, the legacy and impact of the Marshall Plan are multifaceted and enduring. From economic revitalization to the consolidation of democratic values, and from the forging of transatlantic ties to its symbolic importance as a beacon of international cooperation, the Marshall Plan remains a pivotal chapter in the history of the 20th century, shaping the trajectory of nations and influencing the course of global affairs.